My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center today to show you how to install a smooth patch panel into a dash of a 55 to 59 Chevy or GMC truck. Now I've done a lot of metal work in the past, you've seen all my videos I'm sure, but I have not installed one of these before, so today we're both going to learn how the best way to install this, show you some helpful handy hints along the ways. You all stay tuned, yeah? Okay, so a couple of things here is that we have a defined line right here where the um, glove box door used to be. So I'm going to have to make sure that I cut it right here as close as I can. I want to leave as much of the original metal as possible. Once I've got that line established right here, I'll be able to establish my line on the other side. If I was to start just putting this up here and start making lines and start cutting things out, it might get a little ugly real quick. Another thing I can see is that this line here on the top isn't exactly straight. So on the uh, dash that is, it kind of curves down there and it kind of curves right here. So another thing I think I'll be doing is I'll just shave off a little bit of metal here on the top on either edge and I'll get a little bit tighter fit up there and then I will um, <clears throat> see what else we got going on. Now another thing I want you to notice on these dashes is that there is a support on the back right here. And when we're cutting off anything in the dash, we want to make sure that we don't ruin this brace that's going all the way across. It's just held on with some spot welds and things like that. Um, so I'll show you how to take care of those in a little bit. Let me do a little bit of trimming on this and getting to fit in my dash a little bit and then I'll show you what comes next. So you can see right here we got a pretty decent gap at the top right here and I'm gonna have to weld along here and I don't want to weld a big fat gap like that so I'm just gonna take a magic marker and I'm going to mark about where and how much I need to trim off of both sides right here. And I'll do that two, three, four times until I get it exactly like I like it. I recommend that you take as much time as you need for this because the more time you spend here is the less time you spend somewhere else doing repairs. Okay, so I've got it back up here again and I got my marker and I'm just going to keep doing this. I got to make sure that this gap right here is gone. Now technically speaking, where I'm going to cut this and it's going to be installed if it was hanging over, it technically wouldn't be that big of a deal, but um, if you did have hangover then you'd have sharp metal that could uh, catch your wires and miscellaneous other stuff, plus you just always want to do everything the right way, sort of speak, and just get you in proper um, uh, metal working, body working experience. No matter what you're doing, small, big, or large, you're doing it the right way every time so you don't have to worry about any time you do anything. So now this is a flap wheel here. This has just got sandpaper that's glued onto a piece laid down. And these are really nice to keep heat down. They sand pretty quick and all. But if I want to keep things um, nice and straight, then I'll use something like this. And so when I did my rough grinding, I went ahead and used this because it's just faster. But since it's not flat, it can give you grooves in there. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll switch to this guy and I'll finish off the last bit and this will make it nice and straight when it's fitting up at the top. Now I've got my gap at the top here looking pretty good, and um, but now I'm seeing some uh, problems with my original thinking. So I was thinking about I would just take this edge right here and line it up to the edge of the um, glove box door. But if I do that, you can see that this kind of bunches up real close to this uh, metal here. And if I do that, grinding and welding and corners, that's going to be really difficult. So I want to have as much of the original metal here as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this patch panel start at the very edge right here giving me as much meat as possible. Then I'm going to trim this edge right here probably about a half an inch or so so that it lines up with this a little bit better too. 
Okay, so basically what we're doing right here is we want to take our um, patch panel and we want to do all of our trimming and fitting on this first. And we want to make sure that um, we have this fitting as proper as possible. Because what we're going to be doing is using this for the template of what we're going to be cutting out of our dash. If you were just to start cutting into the dash, you might be um, uh, uh, cutting too large and now you're going to have to add metal. That's a lot more difficult, a lot more time. So we're going to take all of our time getting this to fit as nice and proper as possible before we start getting into the dash. So again, I want to keep as much metal over here as possible. So I made just a little bit of a mark. I got my patch panel up against here. I can see where my um, glove box door shut, and I'm going to make a little mark right here where I'm going to cut it. Now, when I'm making marks and cutting things, I'm not going right dead on the line. I want to give myself a little bit of forgiveness room, so I'm cutting things a little bit larger than what I need so that I can trim it down and make a perfect fit. Another nice little trick that you can do when you have something like this to cut out is you can get some tape and then this can help you make a nice straight line. So on the top right here I thought about a couple of different ways of doing it. it it'd be kind of nice to leave this metal right here and cut straight across because it'd be easier to grind this uh, weld down. It's difficult to grind welds in the corner really. But when you get to here where the door is, then you'd have kind of a gap going on right here that you'd have to fill up. So your welding here and your welding here wouldn't necessarily match up and then that might give you kind of an odd thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and cut at the corner right here right in this little nook and I'm gonna take it straight across and then um, cut it all out the one time what I'll use to make my line is my patch panel now I got to lean it up a little bit because I can't be sitting on these bumps right here raising me up so I simply put this right here I got this right here when this metal is going to be welded onto here it won't be overlapped it's going to be a butt weld okay so overlapping isn't really that great because when you do that um, a couple of different things happen you get rust and moisture in there and then that's going to just break apart in the future and then you're also going to have a little bit of a step there so you'll do the weld and all and then you're going to have to put bondo in order to keep keep that step smoothed out. But if you go with a butt weld or a flush weld, now everything's going to be nice and flat and proper. And you're not going to have to worry about rust and miscellaneous things like that coming back to haunt you in the future. So with all those things in mind, we're going to put this panel right here. And then I can use a magic marker to cut this out. Now remember that this line here is a little bit high. We're going to be cutting below this line down in here when we're cutting that out. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out basically uh, the mass of the dash right here. I'll cut along the top right here. I'm going to cut at the very edge of the glove box door. I want to save as much metal as possible. And right here, I'll be cutting along the edge right here too because I don't want these um, bumped up and interfering with my final placement of my patch panel. When I'm doing all of this, again, like I told you before, there is a brace underneath that I have to be mindful of and I don't want to cut all that out um, so when you're cutting you make sure that you don't take your wheel and bury it all the way deep you're only taking it and you're only putting it in the depth of the metal and that's it now um, I'll be cutting the mass out and there are spot welds at the bottom right here now, a lot of times um, they get so old and rusty when you cut this other stuff off, those will just fall off. If that does not happen though, what I'll do is I'll cut above the brace and I'll cut all of this out and then I'll just have a little bit of the metal left over and then that's going to make it a lot easier to take the remnants off, drill out the spot welds or whatever's gone there. And uh, if I was to uh, drill out all the spot welds first, some of them might be rusted and I may not have had to do it in the first place. If I cut all of this and then I try to do that, this is all flopping on me. So what we do is we just get our mass out and then we generally take off any leftover metal. <coughs>
this right here is a spot weld cutter. It's really handy when you um, have this kind of a thing. If you don't have one of these, they're relatively inexpensive. If you still don't want to get one, I'll show you a few ways around that too. Now how to find them on here is uh, when it gets all rusted up and ugly like this, it's a bit difficult. So you just get a, a sanding wheel. Now I can see I've got one here and here, a few others there. So I find all of my uh, spot welds. I'll get a little um, one eighth drill bit and I'll do a little pilot hole in each one of them. I won't go all the way through them, just going through the first piece of metal. You'll notice it's got this pin on the end of here. And technically speaking, that's supposed to um, stay when you're drilling that, but it typically doesn't and it'll walk around on you. If you do yourself a little eighth inch pilot hole first, it's gonna stay and it's gonna be a lot easier to uh, take those off. So now let's say for instance, you don't have a spot well cutter, don't wanna go get one. It's not a big deal. You just simply take your um, die grinder and your cutting wheel and you can either just kind of sand it off, grind it off, or you can put several relief cuts through it. You get yourself some pliers and you pry back on the metal. Uh, the main thing is to make sure you don't do any damage to the support underneath. So just take your time and gingerly take this off. You can see it's going to be a lot easier to do when it's just small pieces of metal than when it's the whole dash you're working with at the same time. So give me a little bit of time to get this off and I'll show you what comes next. Okay, so on this piece right here, there are a few of spot welds on the bottom too, so don't forget those there. Now that, uh, oh, another thing is that there are some really little supports right here. So watch these when you're cutting this out too. If you leave those in there, it's gonna make it easier for you to uh, hold this up here and get a nice um, shot of what's going on. So uh, I also like cut from the, um, ashtray on over just to give it a little bit more flat or what have you. So now I'm just going to continue to trial fit my patch panel and to have it as um, nice as possible before I trim off any more of the uh, dash. So I'm just going to see how things are lining up, see where I might want to cut things. And do I want to trim it off of here? Do I want to trim it off of here? Uh, what are my gaps looking like? So I'm playing all of those things into um, consideration and just making final marks and final cuts. All right. So I'll just continually put my uh, patch panel up and double check everything and trim and trim until I get everything nice and neat. Um, now obviously I'm cheating here to some degree. I've got the dash out on a table and it's nice and easy to work with. Um, obviously if you still have yours in your truck, you have to take some preparation. I don't see how you do this really and have your, uh, your dash in here, uh, your gauges, but uh, so you probably want to take those off. You want to get all your wiring and make sure that it is far back as possible. They have um, welding blankets that you can put over things and uh, the sparks won't dig in and ruin anything. If you have glass in there, make sure that the glass is covered up because when you're grinding and you're cutting and you're welding, if any of those sparks hit your glass, it'll burn in there and you are not going to be able to get that defect out. If you got carpeting in there, obviously you're going to have to cover that up too. The welding blankets are the best way to go for that because they're specifically designed not to catch on fire and burn everything down. So I'm just going to keep trimming on this. After I get done trimming, I'll clean up my bottom um, support right here. And um, obviously if you're working on yours, you're going to be painting it and getting everything as pretty as you can before you put this on because obviously it's going to be harder to do after the fact. So take all of your time here, again, take all of your time here, because this, it might seem really tedious and boring and etc. but if you have to go back and recut or have ugly welds, etc., etc., you're just gonna eat time there. So this is gonna be a lot easier to do now. So give me a few minutes here and um, I'll show you what comes next. 
Now this obviously isn't going back on a truck, but I just want to reiterate the fact that um, when you're doing all this, you want to kill all the rust that's in there. This is a good thing right here. You don't have to use this, but use something. Kill that rust under there and paint it before you put all this stuff back on. Another thing I'll do sometimes is paint the inside of this right here too, just to keep everything at bay. Now what we're doing when we're getting this patch panel set up in here is uh, on our sides right here, we want to have a little bit of a gap. Now you might think to yourself when you're welding, oh, I'm going to take the patch panel, I'm going to have it as close as possible, and then I'm going to weld it. Well, the problem with that is if your weld does not permeate all the way through, when you grind off the top of that weld, that weld might break. So you need a little bit of a gap for, for the weld to actually penetrate and stay. Then when you grind off the top, you'll still have your weld in there keeping your patch panel together. Another reason you're going to be doing it is because we're going to be using these right here. This is a patch panel clamp. So we'll just simply put this through here. We'll put this right on through like that. We'll butt up our patch panels and then we'll tighten this up and it'll hold everything nice and secure. So when you're doing this, maybe you'll get it going and then you'll see, oh, I need to trim a little bit more. No big deal, just take it back out, trim it a little bit more, and just keep doing that until you get it perfect. So I've got it basically in here. Now I want you to notice on the bottom, this roll down here, this here does not just automatically match. What we're gonna need to do is make sure that we have everything secured at the top, basically welded in. And once that's nice and secure, then I can work my roll pan going under here. When I set this in, I can use a screwdriver and, and kind of move things around left to right, that kind of stuff. I've got it all nice and even. Let's say for instance, we've got something like this where the um, panels don't line up exactly. I can take a little screwdriver like this and then I can simply um, move the metal just a little bit, get me a tack weld on there, wait until it cools down because if it's still hot it'll move and then um, I can use all these little tricks to get this panel as flat as possible. Now one thing I want you to notice here that when I cut this out I probably went a little bit too high right here and I've got this gap going on right here. Now if I just take the metal and push it up what's going to happen is this is going to go like this and then it's going to do a riser like that. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'll tack weld this uh, along here along this line that's a little bit straighter. Once I've got that secured then I can go ahead and weld this in. The gap there is um, not going to be that big of a deal it'll fill in with a weld so no big deal but um, now I'll go ahead and get my tacks going like I said I'll get a tack weld going about every four inches or so okay now heat is your problem here if I just keep welding it's just gonna warp the metal all up and carry all kinds of problems so only get a few spot welds about four inches apart do that a couple of times then grind them off a little bit. You don't want to do all your welding and then have to do all your grinding because all the grinding at once is going to create heat. That's going to create um, problems for you. And it's just a lot of work too. When you just have a few spot welds, they grind off really nice and easy. But if you had a fat weld everywhere, it's going to take a long time to grind it down. So let me get started on this and I'll show you what it looks like. So you have to constantly keep your eyes and your hands on your metal. It'll warp on you in a second. So to that degree, we're using a straight edge here on the top to make sure that when we get these tack welds in here, that this is all nice and straight. We don't want that bowing or anything. You'll notice that I'm using my fingers to make sure that it's nice and level before I hit it with the tack weld. If I feel like it's a little bit off, I can use a little screwdriver. Maybe I'll use a hammer and dolly. But whenever you find a defect, stop at that particular moment and fix that. Don't just be impatient and keep on welding and get it all done and then think you're going to go back and fix it later because after it is welded it's kind of cemented in and it makes it harder for you to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to beef up these edges here a little bit more then it'll be strong enough to or I can roll the pan underneath and have it all nice and even across the bottom. All right so now I'm going to be rolling my edges. I've got this firmed up enough to where it's secure and when I bend this it's not going to warp anything up here. Now if I was to just take a clamp 
and simply clamp down there. I want you to notice right here, I think the camera can pick it up. It's not going to match right here. So you can't just take a clamp and do that. What you need to do is use your finger and, and hold the patch panel down until it's nice and flat. Get your tack weld there and then work your edge all the way around um, before you finish off the bottom. You can't just grab it and twist it down. So work that edge and uh, get it really nice and even. So now we're going to go ahead and secure the panel to the support on the bottom. This right here, this is what's known as a rosette well. What we're doing is we're taking about a 3 8 inch drill bit and we're just going to drill through the first piece of metal and the second piece of metal we're only going to go about halfway through. It's a little bit tough, you really got to watch it. If you do punch all the way through, it's not a big deal, we're just welding it up anyway. But if you do it just through the first and just partly into the second, it gives you a little bit cleaner weld. So it goes a little bit like this. Now when I'm doing this weld, what I want to do is in the center of the hole, on the second piece of metal, I want to make sure that I start the weld right there. If I was just to try to fill in the hole, the weld may not um, hold correctly. So we're going to make sure we're getting our weld started on the second piece of metal, then we're going to expand out in a circle and make a nice little weld. So just like that. Now what I'll do is uh, go about every three or four inches until I get to the end of the support right here. Where the glove box door was, there's going to be a bit of a gap. Now really, I could probably just let that be. I don't think you necessarily have to do any welding right here. But if you wanted to, you could just put some square tubing in there or from some flat stock and uh, go ahead and weld it in and do the same rosette welds here too. Uh, I'll just leave that up to you. So after I have this nice and secure, I can go ahead and trim this to get it to match. I'm going to do something a bit like, a bit like that, I think. All right, you know, I kind of curved this out, but this doesn't look quite right here. I know it's under the dash. I know he's going to go under there and look, but like I said, you do everything perfect and then you don't have to worry about it. So I just put a straight edge up there, get a line on there. Let me see what it looks like. All right, so that was definitely the way to go there. I just trimmed off a bit more and now it's looking all nice and straight. Now right here, I want you to notice, uh, I just finished off a small section so I could show you what it looks like when you'd be done. And I want you to notice how well the uh, welds molded in and both of our panels are nice and even. There's no step in there or anything like that. I want you to notice there's no harsh, jagged edges on the weld. If you have something sharp and um, jagged, and you might think to yourself, well, I'm just going to put some filler on here. I'm going to primer it up. I'm going to sand it down. But that harsh edge can phantom back up and uh, bother you in your paint job later. So you want to make sure that there are no harsh edges and everything's nice and smooth. Now, it's looking really good. I got a little bit more welding to do, a little bit more grinding to do, but I'm not going to bother you with all that stuff. So... Um, what I want you to do now is subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out our Facebook and our Instagram. Next week, I'm going to be doing another video, and if you don't subscribe, you're going to miss it. You're going to feel bad. Your, your friends and neighbors are going to make fun of you. You just never get it. You just got to...